Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the world-ranked super featherweight contender and my favourite fighter in the whole world. It is, of course, <laughs> Mr. Archie Sharp. Archie, welcome back on the show. Uh, thanks for having me on, mate. I hope all is well. Always is well when speaking with you, my friend. So we last spoke back in June, not too long ago. At the time, you were getting ready to fight Ryan Garner. I was sat ringside at the O2 for the fight. Um, talk me through. Yeah, talk me through the fight. Let's start there. You started the fight well, I thought. Yeah, so we started the fight well, first round or two, and then obviously we picked up unfortunate cut um, in the second, and I think it was in the second, towards the end of the second, and from there it just kind of uh, kind of got worse. And uh, yeah, just to kind of say like my game plan went out the window, everything just kind of went from then. I like, got myself into a bit of an egotistic sort of fight where uh, once I knew I couldn't get hurt with his punching power or anything like that there, I just kind of stood still and, and, and started trading up. And Archie, obviously the fight before that, where we see you get dropped twice in the first round, I think some people thought, oh, that's the first time Archie's properly been hit. Maybe you know, yeah. maybe his chin isn't so great, but obviously you'd have, you'd have been found out against Garner. You took his shots really well. You actually rocked him, I felt, a couple of times. Um, do you think you answered the question there? Yeah, no, no, I definitely answered the question. Um, and look, no matter who you are, especially for someone like myself who's been in the game for, well, start when I was seven years old, never been, never touched the canvas in sparring fights or whatever, you know. And first time happening, you do ask yourself a question. Um, and then I got in there with Ryan, and uh, like I say, I think with that one in May, it was just a matter of fact of me just walking in there complacent. Um, and uh, it's got cool cold because there was no answer for that. But I feel like things happen for a reason. And since then, I haven't changed anything in regards with the training, my personal life, or anything. Um, so I feel like I needed this loss to kind of really love myself up and, and make the changes that are well needed. So um, like I say it's not it's not um, ideal for myself having that picking that loss up to Ryan. But I do generally believe that it was myself who won that fight for Ryan if you know what I mean it wasn't like Ryan was too good for me or Ryan had the ability and he was a better fighter I just believed that I fought the wrong game plan down to myself where allowing emotions to take over instead of just bit sticking to what I need to do to win and obviously you talk about deviating from the initial game plan um, you mentioned the cut you've been cut before obviously you, you, you've been knocked down in the past got up and won what was it that actually made you change because like i say i mean you've been cut before and still won fights yeah of course cool. so i don't think it's like i say it's not to do so much with um with the cut. that's not an excuse i think with the cut it makes things more messier and obviously ryan sort of start was on your on your chest from the get-go um but like with myself joe there's been a lot of things outside the box and have been a bit erratic with personal life uh running a company um Obviously, I've got four kids indoors, so I didn't, I didn't get away for camp. I stayed at home. Um, so I feel like everything just kind of, it was very erratic. And what that does is shows in my performance now how erratic that things have been outside of life. Now it's coming to my boxing. And I think that's what it boils down to, is just not sticking to the game plan because I was a bit too erratic, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I understand. And again, sat ringside. I've said it. I've said it before. I say it again. I still thought that you just nicked it. Um, I still, I still need to watch it back on TV, which I must do. I've watched back the first round. You definitely won the first round. I haven't seen anything after that point on the TV. Have you watched it back and scored it? Yeah, I, I, I did watch it back. It took a few, it took a couple of weeks. Um, just finally sit down and uh, come to come to a realization with it, all, with it all and sit back and watch it. Um, but yeah, I, I, look, I'm not, I'm not saying that I was robbed. I'm not saying that I was cheated out of a draw because uh, me watching it, depends on what you're scoring. You know, I did invest a lot into the body, and even with the commentary, like when I was landing body shots, there wasn't no like, oh, well done, like, like, like comment, commenting uh, with the body shots that was landing. You know, like if I land two body shots and get, and if I got caught with a right hand, the only thing that was getting mentioned was the right hand. Nothing, there was no, so that, and the stats kind of say it to an extent because it says that I outlanded him more. Um, that's what, that's what the, uh, is it the AI stats, the things they've got now? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I, I'm not too yeah, sure. Yeah, so basically there's, there's new AI stats that show how many shots were thrown, 
who landed the most and all, all, all that stuff. So, and on the stats, it said that I, I landed the most scoring shots. So, right. I think it was like 10 punches different. So, for me, if you're looking at that, you say, well, why actually landed more and got hit less? But, obviously, when you watch the fight, it kind of, uh, I think a lot of it was still with the body shots. I was landing a lot of body shots and I don't think they was being scored. He was landing the probably more, more head shots. I think that's what kind of they, they judge based it on. So, that I say draw... It could have been, but I won't argue six for him, you know. And my last question on the fight, because obviously it's behind us now, but how good do you think Garner can become? Well, I think that's him at his best, and that's why I'm not so disappointed with what's going on. I didn't get out of the ring and think that like, I wasn't good enough. I'm not good enough, or I haven't got another game plan. I knew that was what Ryan was going to do, um, and what lost me the fight was me holding my fo- holding my feet. Ryan's a good kid. And I wish him all the best. Hopefully we get the rematch straight away. But whether they take it or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, but being how good he's going to be, I don't know. Because if you look at the other fighters, i.e. Zelfa Barrett's, Zelfa Barrett won't be standing still like that, you know? If he gets to his boxing, and that's how I should have done. Now he boxed Jordan Gill, but obviously come back a little bit more. Because I do think Gill was beating Barrett, to be fair, until we got stopped. But... I don't know. It's only a question that you have to just see with with time, I suppose, with fights. But I do feel like that was the best Ryan Garner. Um, and that was probably like a 60% Archie Sharp, you know. No, fair enough. That's honest. Um, what have you been up to since? Obviously, you said you, you had just had too much going on in your life. I know that, obviously, you opened up a business. I know I know the house well. I've been in it myself. Um Thankfully, I don't think I don't think there was four kids back then when I was in it. But uh... <laughs> it's still hectic, mate. My life's still hectic. But you know what it is. I thought, at the end of the day, it was hectic whilst I was through camp. So I might as well do what I need to do now. Carry on being hectic, getting things sorted. And once I go into next camp, which will hopefully be soon, I'll be out again before the end of the year. Um, at least with now, I can kind of finalise a load of things, get my head down, sort the training side of things out that needed to be sorted. I.e., with trainers, there's a lot of there's a lot of inputs. You know, you got Ryan. Uh, Ryan, you've got Roy, you've got uh, Ian, um, Richard, Lee Wilkins had a, had, had a bit involved with the training as well, which all of them, which was all brilliant. Like, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything, anyone was better than others. Like, they all, all their inputs was perfect. But you know what they say about chefs, you know, too many chefs and things like that. So I think I just need to kind of simplify things and go back to what I know, how I like to box, and what I know works well for me, you know? No, definitely, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Um, I've seen you post a lot of training videos since this fight, more than usual, actually. Yeah. You seem like you're training really hard. Well, funny enough, mate, like, like I say, things happen for a reason. Like, I've got a new buzz about me now, you know? Like, that that whole 25 and 0 not losing, bear with me two seconds. You've got sirens coming past, so bear with me two seconds. It's all you're not going to take you in the back of that van. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's That'd all good. First. So, yeah, so, um, no, yeah, training, like I say, training's been been very good, mate. Like, I've gone back to some really old school stuff that I used to do. Um, and I, I, there's a new buzz about me. That whole 20, like, like I say, that, that, oh, yes, it's nice to keep and no one wants to have a defeat on their record 100%, but that's out the window now, you know, that's been and gone, like, that don't matter now, that's, that's done, that whole, that's, that's one pressure alone, when you've got that, uh, everyone's uh, comments on your record and now that's, that's been and gone, it, it feels like a weight off my shoulder, if you like, and now I'm just excited to get back in the ring and be in the biggest fights as possible and then I'll showcase my skills, you know. And talking about being back in the ring, obviously we had Albert Bell on last week's podcast. You and him were linked together for a good while. It looked like the fight would happen. Despite taking that loss, he still shows an interest in the fight. I'm wondering what other options are actually on the table right now. Uh, surely that's got to be, you know, I know that obviously the numbers have all got to make sense. But, you know, just looking at things, that, that has to be one of the best opportunities that, that there is coming off a loss for you. Uh, yeah, there's loads of fights there, you know, like people are all, surprisingly, Joe, what, it's, it, there's a lot of fights there, you know, look at Joe Cordino, Joe Cordino got stopped, the next minute he's fighting Shakur Stevenson, you know, like, it ain't, it ain't the old end now, like, I just want to be in the big fights, regardless of the outcome, it was still a good fight for people to watch, it was a very entertaining meeting, Ryan, we both put it on the line, do you know what I mean, there was blood, there was, it was, it was all sorts going on, so it was a good fight, a good entertaining fight for people, and that's what the boxing's about, you know. 
So um, I might end up, I'm never rarely in any boring fights. Uh, so I reckon there's a, there's a load of options there. We're in talks. Um, and yeah, like I say, I've got more options now than I did when I was unbeaten on a winning streak. <laughs> Um, and something I want you to clear up as well, because I thought that when you came to York Hall in the Lambo and all that, I thought you, you'd sign back with Frank. But then when you did the face-off thing with Ryan Garner, which was really interesting, I thought you said that he was with Frank and you weren't. Are you with Frank or not? Well, so I was on a two-fight deal with Frank, uh, with the May show uh, and then the Ryan Garner fight. Um, uh, okay. So now, yeah, we just ne- negotiate, see what other options there are. Um, but... I've had a lot of history with Frank, you know, so I'm sure there's there's a possibility there of us doing other things. Like I said, we're in talks with with, with talking to Frank, talking to a few people. So, uh, so yeah, like I say I'm not I'm not actually signed to one person at the minute. Um, that was a two fight deal, and yeah, we'll see see what other options are about. But, are, but well the good thing see. is, Joe, there are Sorry. there are there are options, you know. That's the good beauty of it. We're in a good position. Uh, we're in a good place, like, regardless of whoever I fight, everyone knows I'm always going to be in an entertaining fight, so uh, that's what people want. And you haven't lost your top 15 ranking as well, which I had a sneaky suspicion might happen. Um, it's good yeah. that you're still in, you know, still in the top 10 even. Um, it was great as well that Usyk was sat ringside for your entire fight. I saw him paying close attention. That was great. Uh, my final two questions, Archie. Um, you mentioned it a little bit. Joe Caldina, Shakur Stevenson, October 12th in Saudi Arabia. How do you see that one going? Caldina up at lightweight. Yeah, I think it's a great fight. Um, if we just had to say who I think is going to win at the end of it, look, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to back Shakur. In my, like, that's no disrespect to, to Joe, obviously. Shakur is a great fighter, and um, so is Joe. But I just feel like Shakur might be like, a little bit more cuter. However, I think this will be the hardest fight Shakur has been in as a pro, and he will need to answer a lot of. Um, there'll be questions that need to be answered that has, he hasn't come across yet. But let me tell you something: Joe Cordino at one three fight will be a strong operator. I think the one thirty just took too much out of him, and uh, and yeah, I'm excited for the fight. And then as a boxing fan, I'm looking forward to, to watching it. And lastly, Anthony Kakachi against Josh Warrington in three weeks' time. Interesting. Yes, I think that's another good fight as well. Um, I must say, I do feel like with Kakachi and Warrington, I think Warrington's just going to be Warrington's going to be the same, the same. Just come forward, come forward all the time, and uh, I think Kakachi. I think Kakachi wins. That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to favour Kakachi for that. Um, but same again, another great fight. Great fight for boxing. Very interesting fight. But uh, we all know Warren is going to be in there, you know, and giving and pushing, pushing Kakachi because it will, will will be interesting. This if Kakachi don't hurt him early doors, how's Kakachi going to be at the last six, last half of the fight? Because he's massive for the weight as well. Surprised he's still making one thirty. To be honest with you. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting factor. Those those last yeah, the, the 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 back end of the fight will be interesting. We know that Josh will be there. Um right, closing words, Archie, if you just want to wrap it up with a message to our listeners before we let you go, I appreciate your time. Uh just uh, thanks for having me on and you know I'm always grateful, always grateful for everyone tuning in and supporting and, and being part of the journey. So yeah, looking forward to being back out and no doubt we'll be back in a good fight for everyone and as always, I just give it my best and, and keep going, you know? So, yeah, appreciate you all. That's all you can do, my friend. Listen, Archie, as always, the pleasure's mine. Thanks for your time. We'll keep our eyes peeled for a, for a next fight announcement, and we'll speak again soon. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Joe. God bless you, mate.